With its spouting geysers, majestic mountains, awe-inspiring waterfalls, and panoramic views, Yellowstone National Park is a sight to behold. But it also has the potential to cause a great deal of damage. Concealed beneath the park rests the Yellowstone Caldera, the largest supervolcano in North America. Each year, millions of visitors trek over a massive magma chamber that stretches 5 kilometers to 17 kilometers beneath the surface and is about 90 kilometers long and about 40 kilometers wide. A little deeper rests another chamber that's 4.5 times larger. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at this impressive supervolcano and answer the question, what if it was to erupt? The Yellowstone Caldera, sometimes referred to as the Yellowstone Supervolcano, is located in the northwest corner of Wyoming. It first formed during the last of three super eruptions over the past 2.1 million years. While the unfounded fear in a pending Yellowstone eruption has swirled for decades, with documentaries depicting what would happen if the volcano erupted again with a magnitude as large as its blast some 2.1 million years ago, which produced roughly 588 cubic miles of material. While such an eruption in the distant future is possible, the probability of it happening in the next few hundred years is exceedingly low, according to the USGS. Supervolcanoes are like the supervillains of the geologic world, as stories of their looming threat grow ever more exaggerated. Though massive eruptions do pose real dangers, misconceptions about them become abundant. According to the United States Geological Survey, a volcano is considered super if it has had at least one explosion that released more than 240 cubic miles of material, a little more than twice the volume of Lake Erie. That places it at a magnitude of 8, the highest ranking on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, which is used to measure explosiveness of an eruption. Yellowstone is now perhaps the most famous of the world's volcanoes that have produced VEI-8 eruptions. The magma lurking in Yellowstone's shallow reserve is between just 5 and 15 percent molten. An eruption usually requires at least 50 percent to gel in this gooey hot state. The most likely explosive event to occur at Yellowstone is likely to be a hydrothermal explosion, a rock hurling geyser eruption, or a lava flow. These explosions are very small and occur every few years, forming a crater a few meters across. Every few thousand years, a hydrothermal explosion will form a crater as much as a few hundred meters across. Of the past 50 or so eruptions, almost all were simply lava flows, which have minimal direct effect outside Yellowstone National Park. Regardless of how the magma forms, however, a volcano needs a lot of it to produce a super eruption. As the magma builds, pressure in the underground cavity increases. A super eruption requires tons of pressure to actually jettison the huge pockets of molten rock through the surface. If we take a look at the 1815 explosion of Mount Tambora in Indonesia, we can get an idea of what the effects were like then. At a VEI of 7, this explosion was not quite a super eruption, but still had a devastating impact. The explosion sent a superheated plume of hot ash and gas 28 miles into the air upon its collapse, producing searing avalanches known as pyroclastic flows. Such immediate hazards killed around 10,000 people, but that's not all. The gases and ash injected into the atmosphere darkened the skies, blotted out the sun, and altered the climate, resulting in what became known as the year without summer. Extensive crop failures, starvation, and disease followed, which killed around 82,000 more people. Luckily for us in these modern times, in the unlikely event of a massive eruption, there would be plenty of warning as it could take weeks or months of warning earthquakes to break up the rocks above the magma before an eruption. There are also agencies around the world that are keeping a close watch on supervolcanoes like Yellowstone monitoring their every tremor and the modern equipment used today helps scientists take their pulse with more accuracy than ever before. While a super eruption would no doubt be devastating, it would not be a world-ending affair. The aftermath of such an explosion would not be pleasant, certainly, but we will not go extinct. How can we know this? 
because this super eruption experiment has already been run. The area around large explosive eruptions is devastated by hot flows of rock and ash. Ashfall out of the distances of hundreds of kilometers can be very many inches thick, according to simulations carried out by USGS scientists. Besides these local implications, volcanic eruptions that expel massive amounts of ash and gas into the atmosphere can have global impacts. In the atmosphere, sulfur dioxide in volcanic gas mixes with water to form sulfuric acid, which condenses to form fine sulfate aerosols. These aerosols reflect the heat of the sun back out into space, which can cause cooling of up to several degrees worldwide if the eruption is large enough. This may not sound like much, but it can be devastating to agriculture. The recent 1991 eruption of Pinatubo in the Philippines also caused global cooling, perhaps by an average of about one degree Fahrenheit during the following year. Yellowstone's most recent huge explosion over 631,000 years ago is perhaps 100 times bigger than Pinatubo's 1991 blast. So it is easy to see that such huge eruptions probably have a significant impact on global climate that might last for years. As of today, there are no clear signs that Yellowstone's supervolcano is anywhere close to erupting. In fact, it's a relief to know that the chances of it actually happening are slim to none. What do you think of Yellowstone? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.